On the morning of September 8, 1380, at Kulikovo, the Moscow-led Rus army defeated the Mongols for the first time. One of the key battles of the medieval age, it was a transformative event in the rise of Moscow as the future capital of Russia. For the first time, rival principalities had joined Moscow to fight a common enemy. Now, many Rus principalities began to see themselves as one. Future leaders of Moscow would draw on the memory of this battle to claim their supreme political position in Russia. Moscow's Grand Prince, Dmitry Ivanovich, had led the Rus principalities to victory over the Mongols, reinforcing his dominance. But for the Mongols' leadership, the defeat at the Battle of Kulikovo was disastrous. The ruler of their Golden Horde was overthrown by a descendant of Genghis Khan. His name was Toktamish. And Toktamish was not going to let the treacherous Moscow-led Rus get away with rebellion. Two years after their defeat at Kulikovo, Toktamish's Golden Horde set out to attack Moscow. The city had not felt the wrath of the Mongols for more than a century. That was about to change. Racing to brace the gates of Moscow, Prince Dmitri and his army of Rus allies rushed into the fortified heart of the city. This would be the greatest test of Moscow's mighty stone walls. But could the capital hold out against the furious legion of the Golden Horde? many Mongol attacks on their city and knew the horde would arrive in vast numbers. The race to fortify Moscow began. Early in his reign, Dmitri had purchased land surrounding Moscow. These vassal settlements provided Dmitri with taxes paid in gold, but could also supply reinforcements. If Dmitri chose to request reinforcements, he would lose the revenue from that settlement. Dmitri's call for support was answered by the vassal town, which sent all the troops it could spare. Добро есть! 
As Dimitri urgently prepared the city's defences, fleeing villagers from nearby towns flooded into Moscow, desperately seeking refuge from the rapidly approaching Mongol army. The refugees from the settlements surrounding Moscow had all arrived at the city. They would wait out the Mongol assault behind Moscow's stone walls. Hearing the thunderous beat of the Mongol war drums on the horizon, Dmitri rallied his men to hold their ground. If the stone walls were breached, the city would fall.
Все латницы готовятся. Приготовляйтесь. И ладни наступайте, латницы с мели. Служите радость. Ладниц, уже и влази на пред. Огони, ладницы. A new threat arrived at Moscow's gates. The Mongols rolled in their mightiest siege engines. Dmitry's call for support was answered by the vassal town, which sent all the troops it could spare. The Mongol torches made short work of Moscow's wooden palisades, and now the old stone walls were all that stood between Dmitri and defeat. Наступаем! Повелевайте! 
With the heartbeat of Mongol war drums closing in, the Rus knew the horde would not relent. Надо про подпору, так вот, так, окей. Кажи, не спал! Ты 
Muscovites bravely held their capital in the face of an overwhelming Mongol onslaught. But now an even larger army had arrived on Moscow's doorstep. Running out of time, Dmitri ordered his army to hold back the Mongols long enough for Moscow's citizens to escape. Встанете! 
Давайте, воине! Подали зубы! Служите рад, Dmitry and his men held the city, giving some of Moscow's citizens time to flee. But despite their steadfast defense, the Rus could hold out no longer, and the capital succumbed to the vast numbers of the Horde. Toptamish Khan sacked the city, plundering its riches and slaughtering any Muscovites that remained. Prince Dmitry had no choice but to take flight, abandoning his home. Rus independence would have to wait. Thank <laughs> you.